I said last week, and, <laughs> and you know, football, like, weeks are like years almost, right? But I said last week, hey, I don't think Watson looked as rusty as some are going to make it out to seem. I thought that the issues were more or less – Things that come from him being in a new offense more so than like the game moving fast at him. And I think that narrative in general is kind of overblown. And I think this week gave me a lot more evidence in that direction. So what we're going to do today, we're going to look into the film on Deshaun Watson. We're going to look at some of the defensive stuff. We're going to look at what the issues are in the offensive line about the run game. We're going to try to figure out what are the problems with the Cleveland Browns what can be fixed, or what was just the Bengals being a really good team? Because I think that factor gets underestimated all the time. Bengals might go to the Super Bowl again. Um, and I think we, we act like they're still the same old Bengals, and I think it's time we cut that. But now, let's look at the film. First things first, you know, it's obligatory, right? Every time we watch some of this film, we got we to gotta show you where Miles was because some of y'all be asking where Miles and Miles be – one of the best players on the team. <laughs> we just got to show you. You know Miles Garrett. You know 9-5. I don't have to highlight him for you. Just a nasty Euro. Oh, my goodness. Just a nasty Euro. You see how also I think we can learn what Watson can do better by watching Joe Burrow too. Um, because Joe Burrow, he he's in his the flow of his offense. He's comfortable. One of the things you watch is look at the feet here by Joe, right? So Miles gets an incredible pass rush here, right? He gets his Euro on Jonah Williams. One, two, just nasty. Jonah never even gets to his – Jesus, Jonah never even gets to his second step. Yeah, Jonah gets to one, two – oh, God, <laughs> before he's cooked. So, I mean, you can't get to the quarterback any faster than what Miles Garrett did. So, how does Joe Burrow get this ball off before he gets sacked? Well, he's in a shotgun. He feels like there's probably pressure coming because he has no help there. Mixon's on the opposite side. So, he knows I have one step, two, three, and then look how shallow Joe Burrow stays in the pocket. That's going to be important, right? This is the one thing I think Watts can work on. He only covers three yards of ground here, right? So one step, two step, and then a little short drop step here to keep him within the pocket so he doesn't give Miles extra an a extra angle there. Now, it's Miles Garrett, so it doesn't matter. But that's really good technique by Joe Burrow. That's why, that's why he's been getting sacked less is his technique in the pocket. Gets that ball off. Almost gets picked off. So, good play defensively for this team. But that's just something to look at with Miles and something to look at forward. All right. So, this is now on offense. The Browns are on offense. And what happens here is a free run blows this play up. Watson makes a smart decision here. Um, and if he got luckier, he could have probably hit Donovan Peoples-Jones here. So, what happens here is Mike Hilton, who, who – there are two players we're going to highlight a lot today. Number 21, Mike Hilton. He's really good. At his job. And then big ass 98. Oh boy was he good. Oh boy was 98 good. Alright so Mike Hilton who we're watching right now. And Mike Hilton gets his free release blitz. He's one of the best slot corners at blitzing in the NFL. This is why he is who he is. But I think Watson does a good job adjusting to this right. Because what happens here is you know the quarterback has their pregame. Their, their pre-snap checklist right. What what. What personnel am I in, right? You can see right now the Browns have one tight end, one running back there, and 11 personnel, three wide receivers. So, okay, cool. What kind of front is this? You can see where the tight end is lined up. Uh, Trey Henderson's lined up on his inside shoulder, so that tells you it's under. So it's an under front. Okay, what's the personnel that the Bengals have out there? We can see two linebackers, right, two linebackers, four down linemen, four dbs back here and then a fifth db here if you have five dbs what's that a nickel right if you have um one one linebacker and six dbs that's dime right and if you have three linebackers four down linemen and you run a four three that's base if you have four linebackers three down linemen really five two but it looks like a three four then that's also base so you do that right you go through your checklist what do i have here okay i have 11 
they're in nickel, so they're matched up personnel to personnel. They're in the right package, right? Um, you know, if we were in 13, they were in nickel, we would run this all the way, um, and we would check out of it. Now, what's the shell, right? The shell is this. If you're looking for the shell, that's what does it look like? Does it look like cover one, two, three, four, right? Like the, there is cover six. Cover six does exist, but cover six looks like cover four. So it would still be a shell of four, right? This looks like a shell of four. It actually turns into three because, again, this corner blitzes, and then I think he vacates, takes that spot, and then it becomes cover three. Forgive me, I'm using the mouse, but it becomes cover three. Okay, so he's going through the checklist, and what's going to happen here, and we're just going to let the play run out now that I've got all the pre-snap stuff out for you. So it's a play action. And again, he does a really good job blowing this play up. But I think Deshaun does an even better job getting this ball out. And this is one of those like sneaky things only Deshaun could do because he has to get up, right? He has to jump to get this ball off. And then he throws an accurate pass here to David Bell. So David doesn't even have to really adjust. He can carry his momentum and he gets the first down. Good play. There's room for growth though, right? Now, in a world where you're not playing against one of the best slot corners in the NFL, um, slot blitzers especially, and maybe that guy doesn't get there as fast, what you're going to want to hit, because this is a three-level play, right? Most, of, most play action boots are. So this is a three-level play. You have a cross. You have a post. Well, not a post. A corner. So this is a deep corner, so deep corner, and forgive me, and then you have this little flat route, right? So one, two, three is usually how you would read it. Some offenses do it differently, but that's pretty much how Stefanski likes to do. Short, deep, intermediate. That's how he likes the progressions to usually go. Um, and you have people's Jones here. The problem is Mike is him right like he's in the way <laughs> um, so you can't get that throw off right if he was able to set his feet he would have found him would have been a huge play but that's just the Bengals being a good defense that's why the Bengals are a good defense is because they have playmakers who can do stuff like that that hey even on a play where the Browns do get 12 yards and does move the chains they prevent a play that would have gave up probably 30 or 40 yards All right, let's go to the next play. Oh, DJ Reader. So we talked about um, 21. Now let's talk about Big Ass 98, who also ruined the day. Now this run goes nowhere near DJ Reader, but DJ Reader is the reason this run is not successful. And if that doesn't make sense to you, I'll point it out to you. Watch 98. And here's why this play has no chance of success. You see this double team 72 and 75 are trying to get on 98 the reason they're doing that is because they're trying to push him out the way so that 75 can climb and get to the second level and take care of one of these two guys since 75 can't get to the second level and take care of one of these two guys David Njoku has to jump out and pick one and at that point it doesn't matter what he did right what he did was turn a seven-on-seven seven game into a six-on-seven seven game. And what do I mean by that? Let me play the play a little bit further. All right. So Deshaun is out this play, and he's taking him out this play, right? So these two are both out. So who's left in this play for the Browns? One, two, three, four. Five, six, and then Chubb has the ball. For the Bengals, they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The reason they have seven on six right now, okay, so it's seven on seven right now, right? The reason it's seven on six is because DJ Reader just takes out Joe Batonio out of this play by holding his double team so well. So now, Instead of it being a hat on a hat, seven on seven, 
is now six on seven, and there's a free hat, and the free hat's going to make the tackle. That's how DJ Reader made that happen. We'll see it from the tight angle. But 98 made that happen, right? So one double team, you can see Joe Batonio is desperately trying to get his ass out of there. Look at that. That is a man trying to get out of a collapsing building right now. But the collapsing building has a will of his own because that is not a building. That is a man. That is DJ Reader. He's very good. Look at this. He gets him to the ground, takes him completely out the play. That is, and look, now that 75 can't get and climb to Logan Wilson, who has to find Logan Wilson, right? David Njoku has to decide right here, okay, okay, but Logan's free. Let me get to Logan. I know Jermaine Pratt there, but maybe somebody else can get Jermaine Pratt. Maybe Wyatt Teller pulls and gets to him, right, because Wyatt Teller is pulling. So I'm going to try to get to Logan Wilson. And, yeah, he gets to Logan Wilson, but, again, free man. Now it's a two-on-one situation with Cam Taylor Britt and Jermaine Pratt. And you see how it just kind of, like, like dominoes fell over, right? One part, the, the responsibility for 75 was probably get to Logan Wilson, right? You can't get to Logan Wilson, so now it becomes a two-man problem for David and Joku. Now it's between Logan Wilson and Jermaine Pratt. Okay, David Njoku says, I got to pick one. I'm picking Logan Wilson. All right, so Jermaine Pratt's free. Now it comes to Wyatt Teller, and he has another two-man problem because he's outnumbered. Who's he pick? He picks Cam Taylor Britt. Jermaine Pratt's still free, makes the tackle. DJ Reader took that player out the play. You know, we like to talk about some of these issues like it's only the Browns that are struggling with it. And sometimes a great player makes you just look bad. That's one of those things. Um, DJ Reader did his thing on that play, and you got to give credit to him. He's not successful because the Browns are bad. He's successful because he's good. Right. I believe this is DJ Reader again. Oh, no. This is they got it. Now, now look what happens when they get a good block on DJ Reader, right? Wyatt Teller gets out there, gets, him, gets a good move on him. 75 now. On this double team like he wanted to earlier, doesn't get crushed. He's able to climb to that second level. Boom. No dilemmas. You see that? No dilemmas. And it's a nice run. Football is a beautiful game when you pay attention to it. But look at it again. Look at it again so we can see it. It's a beautiful game. You see how. Joe has the double team. This time he's able to get to the second level because he does. he's not going against DJ Reader. Gets to Pratt. Seals. A little bit of a hold by DPJ, but nobody called it. And then boom, man. We get so wrapped up in blaming stuff on scheme and is the player bad. Sometimes stuff don't work because the other team stops it. And that just is what it is, right? This one right here. This play did not work because DJ Reader exists. Look at this. There's nothing. They, they tried it. They tried it. Maybe Deshaun could come out here and pitch it, but I don't think that's even a good option, right? So they get to this mesh point. The reason Deshaun hands this inside is because at least you have a three-on-three three matchup here, right? You have one, two, three on one, two, three. DJ Reader just wins it. Um, if he pulls this out and runs with Nick Chubb, who I don't know how good Nick Chubb is at catching this option, but this is not a good idea because Helbert's right here, and he has a very good angle, and he's playing this very well. And then Cam Taylor Britt's right there. They got numbers, and then the safety's over top. This ain't going nowhere if Deshaun keeps the ball. So he sees all that. He makes the right decision, gives this to Kareem Hunt. And Kareem Hunt can't go nowhere because DJ Reader is playing like a man possessed. Look at this. That's an all-pro guard in Wyatt Teller that he's just manhandling. And then Sam Hubbard does a great job playing this. Good stuff. Good stuff. But Bengals are a good team. They are a very good defense. I think they're very underrated. And we look here again. 
This will run stuff. This right here I thought was a – oh, God, this is the one play. All right, man, let's talk about this real quick, real quick. So I only have a problem with this fourth and one play call because it's fourth and one. I don't think it's as big as a deal as everybody is making it out to be. People are acting like this is the worst play call of all time. It's a fine play call. It only wasn't successful, and it only wasn't a good play call because it was fourth and one. On third and one, this is a great play call. And the play design does work. So what they're trying to do here is Peoples Jones is on a nine. And then David's going to block and then run her out, right? So he's going to run one of those. He's going to fake like he's going to run, do the run action, and he's going to run it out. What I feel like Jacoby's supposed to do here on fourth down is one, two with his progression. What happened here was that Donovan Peoples-Jones cooked him immediately. Is that Eli Apple? He cooked Eli Apple so thoroughly that I think it changed the read in the progression for um, for Jacoby Brissett. So instead of going one, two, he went one, two, and took the nine instead of it, which is a much more difficult throw. If he just throws the out, I think this works and it's fine and it's not a crazy throw to ask somebody coming off the bench. But he doesn't throw the out. He throws the nine and it looks crazy. But on third and one, it's a great play call. Now, the second part of this is why is Jacoby Brissett in the game? And I'll show you why he's in the game. I have shown you a lot of Deshaun Watson tape over the last couple of weeks. You know what we have not seen once with Deshaun Watson? This, right? They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people in the box. Nine in the box, one DB one safety, and you have two routes, right? One right here, one there. So even if Jermaine Pratt comes out and covers this, it's cooked, baby. It's cooked. That out's going to be there. Again, I think Jacoby got caught getting a little greedy. His eyes got big, and I'll show you why his eyes got big. You're not going to get this look with Watson's out there, by the way. So they wanted this look for this pass play. They weren't going to get it with Watson. On third and one, it's a great play call. On fourth and one, it's very risky. But I don't think it's a horrible play call. And what happens here is watch DPJ. He cooks. Look at this. So when Jacoby drops back, right, and he gets to the top of his step, here's what he sees. He sees the tall tail sign. Safety sitting in the middle of the hash, flat-footed. Donovan Peoples-Jones on a nine, and Eli Apple's hips are pointed the wrong direction. This is barbecue chicken. He's so open that I don't got to throw an accurate ball, and he's still going to score. And that was true. He just threw an inaccurate ball. Now, what you're also going to see is David Njoku. He's wide open. On, well, he's not wide open, but he is definitely open on this out. And I think the ball still should have went to David. On fourth and one, I understand why you would want to take the shot. But David's right there, dog. Right? Like, David's right there. Right? You see the top of the drop? David's got him. David's got him. Just give him the ball. And he's expecting the ball. You see, David's looking for the ball. He thinks and knows this play's supposed to go to him because he's the one. He, he's the main read. He knows he did his job. He knows he's open. He's expecting this ball should come to him. And he's like, what? Yeah, Jacoby got caught being greedy, and he just airmails this. Airmails this badly. He got caught being greedy. Love Jacoby Brissett, but he got caught being greedy on that one. And it made the play call look even worse. If he throws the out, nobody cares. But it became a big deal because he threw the nine. He got he to gotta be better than that. All right. Um, this one right here, let's see what happens. Oh, this is just a great throw by Watson. Yeah. Great read, great throw. I believe this was on the third down. Or no, this is on the second and long to create a third and short. This is a good read, good throw. Was this backside dig? 
Yeah, it was a backside dig. Yep, backside dig. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, backside dig um, is exactly what it looks like, right? Quarterback's eyes are front here, so you run a dig on the backside. I believe this is People Jones. Yeah, you run a backside dig. That's, that's all a backside dig is. It's a dig route on the backside, if you've ever heard that term. So you see backside, he gets a dig. What they're trying to do is put 21 in conflict, right? So they put 21 in conflict successfully because he has to worry about the curl and he has to worry about the backside dig. And Logan Wilson has to cover that. There's a small window here. Got to be accurate. Got to be confident when you throw this in. Deshaun was. Backside dig. Nice. Good ball. Good catch by uh, DPJ too. That's what you like to see. Good stuff. Good, encouraging, great stuff from those two. They have a real connection. Okay, right here. Let's see what happens. Oh, man. This is, okay. So this is one of the things I'm going to be critical about Watson until he fixes with. And I don't know how much of this is rust and how much of this is just he has bad mechanics sometimes. So, you know, just like I wasn't, I'm not going to give everything to the excuse that's out there. I'm not a big he's rusty guy, right? So on the good stuff, I'm going to say he's not rusty. On the bad stuff, I'm going to say this ain't about rust. This is just a bad mechanic thing, right? So what happens here is, oh, my God, the Bengals show an obvious blitz. Like they got three dudes back here. <laughs> and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, why in the world would the Bengals put eight on the line of scrimmage? Why would they do that? Because they know that Watson sometimes can 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 waste a little time with his feet, have problems getting the ball out quick. Here's what I mean by that, right? He gets his ball, and that ball should have been out, but he's still in the middle of his drop, right? For whatever reason, I don't believe this is what they coached. He takes a five-step drop. I'm being generous with the five-step here. But look how many yards he loses. Well, look how many yards he, he, he goes back in his drop. He starts here on the 22. He ends up damn near <laughs> at the 15. That's way too much. That's way too deep. That's way too deep. We looked at Joe Burrow. He ate three yards in a similar situation like this, right? Three yards is all he needed. But for whatever reason, this drop was so deep. It's one, little zero step, two, three, four, five. And then a shuffle, right? This shuffle took so much extra time, right? So this is five. He should just be ready. But he, he gets this little shuffle step. And he's not really able to get comfortable in the pocket because by the time he gets comfortable in the pocket, Blitz is there. Too much time. That, that took too much time. Now he's just able to see things. It took way too long for him to get to the point of his drop where he could just start processing. He's got to cut this down. This is the second time we've seen it. One, two, three. He should be ready to throw right there. He should be doing his pop and slide right there. But he takes, after this, another step, two, three, Another shuffle slide and then a hitch up in the pocket. Way, way too inefficient. And what that does is it does so much where it pushes this pocket back. Now you can't see Amari Cooper wide open in the middle of the field. Got to be better at getting to your death spots um, in, in the pocket. And I think this is something he can learn from. Right. That should have been a big play. But he took way too many steps. Way too many steps. He's got to clean that up. The reason he's not able to, and look, it causes him to be late. This is why he's late on this. Because by the time he's ready to throw the football, now this is a terrible angle to get the ball to Coop. Coop's expecting this ball about right here, right? He's expecting this ball to come out here and catch it right here. And that's probably where Deshaun would have been in his third step. So he's got to clean that up, right? 
He did a great job cleaning up a bunch of other stuff, but this still has to be clean. One, two, three. He should be right there at his top step. And then if he wants to do a little kick and slide, he could do a little kick and slide from there. But he really shouldn't. He should be one, two, three, three flat. Remember when we saw Joe Burrow do it really nice? He's got to get to that level. He's capable. He's got to get to that level. Right? But he needed way too many steps to get comfortable in this pocket. And that caused him to miss out on the window, which was right here. The window was right here to get that ball to Coop. Instead, he's not ready to throw this until his eyes are the complete. Look at where his hips are, too. So that slide and kick and pop made him take his hips in this angle when he should be a little bit more vertical so he can get this ball through this window and just get it on this hash. Even if you're late, just get it on this hash, man. That's the foot stuff that you got to clean up. That's just him being in a new offense, too. I think this is part of him not knowing, not being used to this offense. Also, um, why are we doing the all-out punt blitz? This was just a terrible drive. First of all, for whatever, we try to block this punt for whatever reason. Okay, I'm going to explain to you why this is stupid in three steps. One, Donovan Peoples-Jones is a good punt returner. Two, so he doesn't, you don't need to do this. Two, you feel like your offense is moving the ball decently at this point. You don't need to do this. Three. He's going to catch this freaking thing at the 35. He could have got to the 50 if you would have just had a regular punt return. But instead, you do an all-out blitz. This is why Mike Prefer needs to be fired. Why? Why Why at this point in the game did you feel like that was necessary? And then the guy runs. Of course, the rookie runs into the punter. Well, not the rookie. The second-year player runs into the punter. Just, just moronic. And then we get here. Nice sack. Jadavion Clowney. This is beautiful. Oh, my God. You don't remember this play for a reason, but this is a beautiful play. Look at this. Look at what he does to Lael Collins. He just turns an angle on him that I have never seen. He runs up, one, two, cut. I'm going to just run away from you, buddy, and use big old Taven as a pick. Look, 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 65 had no idea that he was setting the screen for Jadavion, but he did. And Jadavion gets here, and this should be on his tape, but it's not because – Number 58, Isaiah Thomas, gets illegal hands to the face because he puts his hand all up in Jonah Williams' face when he ain't got to. Bam, right there. So you help them move the ball even more, which should have been a sack, a third and long, turns into a first down. Okay, cool. Still got him on the 35, though. All right, they throw down here. You don't even got to hold him. The ball wasn't accurate. But you did pass interference. Now they get the ball at the 30. Congratulations, you gave the Bengals their first touchdown of the day. Almost all purely off of your bad plays. Next play. Oh, this is just DJ Reader being DJ Reader, or was it Mike, Mike Hilton? One of them two. I think it was a combo. I think they teamed up. Nah, this is Mike Hilton. Yeah, Mike Hilton just crashed in there. Oh, yeah, people blame this one on uh on Amari Cooper. Nah, man, ain't nothing Amari can do about this. Look how Mike Hilton just blitzes off this edge. Pop. Coop had no chance to get there. He, he, Hilton made a play, man. Hilton made a play. Great-ass play. He knew that Jed was going to have to chip and climb. That's what designed the play, and they were going to pull that uh, tackle on the other side. And he knew he could beat the tackle there. It's a great play by Mike Hilton. He's a great player. Right here, we got Deshaun in the pocket. Does a good job maneuvering. There was nothing here, so he does a great job of getting something out of it. Just special feet by him when he's running. Look at this when he runs on the sideline. It's pretty special here. This is why he's Deshaun, right? This is why he's paid a lot of money. One, two, three, and he pops. Gets it right there. Made something out of nothing. Play action here. Throws a nice ball to Coop. That's the right read. That's the right throw. And then Coop makes this even better. And this is what the touchdown play does a great. Well, no, no, no. This is not the touchdown play. This is the stop by DJ Reader, who just, again, absolutely murders whoever was in front of him. And then does a look, he does such a good job. He not only murders Yodi, he also ruins whatever block that Joe Batonio was trying to do. 
and then he just gets there. DJ Reader was incredible in this game. DJ Reader and Mike Hilton. I can't say more about them. And but they do get the touchdown here. So good on the Browns. Great play by David Njoku. All right, and the last two plays I want to show you are the peak of what Watson's going to give you and, you know, a mistake that he made. But this is great here. Um, Wyatt Teller gets absolutely cooked off the line of scrimmage. This play kind of gets blown up. With any other quarterback, this is just dead, but he just – I don't know how he made this throw. That's that's incredible off one leg to make that throw accurately in the middle of the field. And again here, this is just an incredible play by Deshaun. His pocket awareness is not going away. His footwork – Need some his feet need some work in the pocket, uh, but his pocket awareness has gone nowhere, and that's just stuff Deshaun's always need to work on. That's just great there. And then right here, he kind of said this in his post game presser. He was going to throw a cross, right? It's open here, but he kind of was late on it. Yeah, so he gets he gets his eyes caught on this post. So Mike Woods is running a post. They're running across here. It's a pretty basic concept. Um, and then there's a flat route here, and you're running this orbit out there. So he's on this hash really deep. He feels like he could make this throw. And honestly, if he makes this throw at this point of the play, he has it. But he sticks onto this cross extra long because he sees – um, Jesse Bates trying to cut the cross, right, which is trying to get right here on it. So he thinks, hey, if I let him cross, cut the cross, I might have the post. But Jesse cuts the cross. He doesn't have the post. And he's like, I still think I can get to that cross before Jesse cuts it, right? He made a risky throw here. Um, and it didn't pay off. And he knows that he should have probably just threw the flat route, right? Get that, get the five yards you would have got if you would have threw this in Demetric Felton. But instead he throws it late, right? While he's getting hit, so that ball's behind, just late behind. Bad things happen when you throw a ball late. Throws a ball late and behind, and then it, it actually is easier now for Jesse Bates to cross it because you see how DPJ has to flatten out to adjust to this ball. You know, if he had a cleaner pocket, he might have been able to throw that on time and still make it. So it's not something that, like it's a terrible decision. He just he threw it late. Bad things happen when you throw it late. Again, I think he'd be better served to just make his feet more efficient out of these shotgun drops, right? Because it seems like he takes some extra steps here and he does these slides and it just causes him to be late. I think he would be better served. I'm not a quarterback guru, so I might not know at, at anything what I'm talking about, but I feel like that worked out, work, would work out for him based on what I see with other quarterbacks. But yeah, that's Deshaun Watson. That's the Cleveland Browns. That's the film breakdown for today. Y'all have a great day. Have an even better night.